good morning once again, everybody. It's good to be back together and uh, good to welcome some of them that have just popped in. Johan and Letta, good to have you with us and everybody else. And then the folk in the hall today, it's our second last meeting for the year. My goodness, the year has come and gone. Um, I also greet the people that are, that are going to watch this podcast a little bit later in the week. And uh, we're getting quite a few good comments actually coming back that folk catch up and send it on to their friends and, and listen you know, when they got a, a, an agreeable time because it goes around the world and times are not always, you know, doesn't always work together. I've got a very short and simple message today that I want to share with you, but it's it's very relative to you know, what like Carl said earlier and Joe sang about and Sheena wrote in, in Psalm 16. But I'm going to be talking and working out of the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, is where I'm going to, I think it's quite uh, relevant and important for the times that we're living in. But before we get going, I want to just uh, open in a word of prayer and um, just pray over this message today and over you folk as well. Father, we thank you that we can come together, Lord, where your word says, where one or two of you are gathered, I'm there in your midst. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee. And I thank you, Lord, for the word you've given me. I thank you, Lord, that it's, it's so relevant for this day and age, especially for those among believers, that Lord Jesus Christ, we would listen and be obedient to your word, to your word and to your book. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen and amen. Amen. Right, guys, if you've got your, your Bibles open to the book of Revelation, like I said, please, and go to chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And I want to just share what the Lord just showed me. Earlier on, on in this week. And the title to the message today, self explanatory really, is Hold On. Hold On. Um, it's a very well known, famous Zulu song. Uh, Joe sings it so well. We used to sing it at our meetings called Bambalela. Bambalela means Hold On. Hold On to Jesus, as that song used to go. Um, and I just want to talk about holding on in life for, for us because there's a lot of people that are, I don't know, not in good places. A lot of people are not starting to doubt, but maybe just getting a little bit cool, you know, just not really where they were a year ago or two years ago. Maybe some of you have uh, actually like, taken a big step back. I don't know. But if it's for you, listen, if it's not for you, then it doesn't worry me either. Because as I said to Joe this morning when we prayed in my house, I'm here to please Jesus Christ, not one of you. And don't get me wrong, I'm not here to offend any of you because I love you all. But I'm not here to please you. The word of God is, is what, what uh, takes precedent here. All right, let's just see where we are. So Revelation chapter 3, and I'm going to read uh, from verse 11 just to get the verse out. And of course, I'm talking about the faithful church, which is the faithful church. Philadelphians, isn't it? That's right. It was one of the two churches that the Lord had nothing against. The rest he had said, this I have against you. And I tend to, and I like to believe and think, and I, I've got prayer warriors that are on the screen that uh, are listening right now, and that we've often prayed about this, and I believe that we try to emulate and do emulate the Philadelphian church, this ministry. Amen to that. Well, let's see what the word says. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. Hey, let me read it again. Behold, that means listen. I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. That's the Lord speaking, by the way. So this is this is what I'm what I'm reading to you today. Is it's not Paul, it's not uh, Timothy, it's not Silas, it's 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 Peter, it's Jesus, and he is coming quickly. Now we might think, well, when is he coming? The Bible says some of them fell away. They said, oh, your your Lord's not coming. He is coming because he said he's coming. I read a beautiful thing somebody posted to me today, and they said, you know that I think it was Sheila actually. She she posted it and said that. Um, a babe would be born of a virgin, it happened. 
You preach the gospel throughout the world, it happened. He'd be crucified. It happened. He'd be resurrected. It happened. And he says, I'm coming again. It's going to happen. <laughs> Lovely that, eh? Thanks, Sheena, for that. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. People are letting go. People are starting to slip backwards. People are starting to uh, not believe or, or their faith is not where it, where it should be. People are starting to question. But, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest problems I have in ministries and, and with Christians when they question. You cannot, you can question me, you can question Val, you can question Carl as much as you like. But you cannot question the word of God. And if he says he's coming, he's coming. Jesus promises to come soon, which in the Greek context means something that will happen quickly or suddenly. Not necessarily a short time from now. So it's it's that close. If you read, if you read the signs of the times, if you see what the Bible is telling us, what is happening, what is coming to, to pass, it's happening. You, I don't care what level of faith you're at, I don't care where you're at. I, if you don't see what's happening in this world today, then you are blind. I'm not a very old man, but I've been around a long time. But the changes in this world are significant from when I was a young man. In fact, since I've been living in South Africa, that was six, seven years ago. It's rapidly moving quicker now. I want to tell you just a story. I love stories. I read this. But before the story, I want to just, just read this again to you. In the meantime, in the meantime, he urges the believers of Philadelphia to keep a firm grip on the truth and on their loyalty to him. A firm grip and their loyalty to him. There can be no other person you can have loyalty to other than Jesus Christ. It's, it's the only name that we speak about it's the only name we profess because i love him because he died for me uh, a, a fellow started arguing with us yesterday and just said carry on man do what you want to do but just two people that want to hear about jesus christ but you, you you just leave me alone and go away funny enough um sadly to say Vasily was from your country but anyway um that's how it is the story during the American Civil War, General Sherman, the great, the great uh, Civil War general, who was a northerner, was driving his troops on a decisive march to the sea. So he had to go somewhere with all, the majority of his, of his uh, uh, army. He left behind a small contingent to guard the rations. That's very important. You know, it's not been, it's not, no jokes. An army marches on its stomach. It's a fact. Very important that to look after this. But they came under attack and many were killed and many were wounded. It, it was so bad that they were ready to surrender. The, the commander of that garrison at the time told his uh, lieutenant to get out the, uh, the, the, the white flag. Run it up. We can't do this anymore. He was giving up. Um, does that prick somebody's ears? He was giving up. When a word came through General Sherman's messengers, a word came through that he was only 15 miles away, and the message said, Hold fast, we are coming. Those few words encouraged the troops in the garrison to keep on fighting, and they held on for another hour, and Sherman came back and saved the day. Had that message not come through, he would have put up the white flag, and that was it. And that would have been a massive change to the Civil War as it swung towards the north. Hold fast, Sherman said. We're coming. So what am I talking about here with the Lord Jesus Christ? Our heavenly commander has also sent us the assurance and a message. I'm coming. Well, why don't you come now, Lord? 
uh, why don't why don't you come tomorrow morning? Because he's God and he's sovereign. You'll come when he's ready to come. He will come when the time is right. The time, if you look at the times, is getting ready. Could be 20 years, could be 30 years. I, I have no idea whatsoever. But I pray that I'm in this uh, era that he comes and I'm still alive physically. That's what I pray. Because it's going to be one of the most awesome things in the world to be taken up. <laughs> I can't wait to go for that elevator. I don't know what it's going to be like. Because I've got an appointment with a pretty gruff old farmer up in the eastern side of Australia. He says he's got a date with me at the, inside the gates, I think we were going to meet. Eh? Then we're going to walk down, <laughs> we're going to walk down to the, the temple together. No, but seriously, guys. Hold fast. The Philadelphians were commended for their effort to obey. So let's just talk a little bit about this very small church. It, it could be that very small church in the middle of London. We're not a mega church. In fact, we're not much bigger than a big cell group. If you're perfectly honest. But outside of this building and outside of this fellowship is a massive evangelistic organization that goes around the world. In chapter 3, verse 8, it says here, I know your works. Does he know your works? Does he know your works? Who is that prophet that said, the Lord was in distress because you're busy building your homes and your houses, but my house, what? My house lies in ruins. He wasn't talking about a physical building because, I mean, I, I was waiting. Why was I in town on Tuesday or Wednesday? It was early. And I saw this beautiful building. I love buildings, especially old ones. It was this old, massive Methodist building. It was down in North End. And I only knew it was a Methodist a building because I knew it was a church. I, I'd see these things with my eyes. And I looked up and there it was. I think 200 years old. It's now an art gallery. <laughs> I thought, you know, the prayers and the people that came into that church all those years, the wars, the, the families that have died and passed away, the pastors that preached there, the, the prayers must have been embedded into those walls. I'm not a Methodist, by the way. Just a believer. I'm a follower of the way. So we go back to, to uh, chapter 3, verse 8. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. Who's closing their door? Who's, who's just pushing it a bit of job because you've been hurt, you've been disappointed, disappointed by your pastor, maybe? Me? Anybody else? Because you didn't like what they said. See, I've set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. No one. For you have little strength. And that is exactly right, you see. Because if you start boasting and telling me how good you are and what you do, then you are useless. He says in the Bible very clearly, he raises one up and he brings another down. So when I hear somebody puffed up about either his job, his golfing career, or his ministry career, I look at him twice when he's telling me what he's done. I don't need to know what you've done because I know what you've done. Did you, did you get that one? I know, I know. Follow people, I read people, I've always had that gift. I know people well. You have kept my word. That's the other thing. You've kept my word. The, the Bible cannot lie. Whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, I don't really care, actually, because what it says here has come to pass up to this date. Everything in this word of God has come to pass. We're not a, this Bible, this word is not a hocus-pocus thing. It's not another funny religion. It's not some of these things that are growing on trees nowadays and 
what's going on in Africa and America. It's an absolute joke what's going on. But you've kept my word, my word. Yes, I failed. Who hasn't failed? I'm looking at a bunch of failures. How's that? But by God's grace, we keep his word. If he says you go left, we go left. If he says you go right, you go right. He tells me, right, Fergus, next Sunday is your last meeting for this year, and you will now close this church because I don't want you operating in that ministry anymore. I want you to go to Sedan. Well, cheers, guys. Go and find another church. Go and find another pastor. Yeah. Oh, hello, Fergus. That's very nice, isn't it? No, well, come with me to Sedan then. I'm not closing the ministry, so don't get, don't get a fright. But I'm just telling you, that's the kind of man I am. There's a guy on the bottom right. He knows exactly how I am. That's why he doesn't come into the mission field anymore with me. <laughs> <laughs> and most importantly now, it says you have not denied my name. You have not denied my name. People abuse the name Jesus Christ. People use that name as a blasphemous word. And it hurts. It really hurts. Because they have no idea what they say. They have no idea who they're talking about. The world is very quick to use the name of Jesus Christ in movies, in streets of London, uh, in pubs and bars. I never hear the name of Muhammad or Buddha or, or Hare Krishna, which I don't really give a, I don't give a damn anyway, quite frankly, because they're all false religions anyway. But when the name of Jesus Christ is blasphemed and scorned, then I really pray for the Holy Spirit to stay in me. Because when he walks out of me, I'm a different man. And that's the one time, if you want to ruffle these feathers, blaspheme in front of me in that name, you got a problem. You have kept my name and not denied my name. Brothers and sisters, it's nearly done. I told you it was a very short message today. Not done, but I'm nearly done. You know, when I'm saying I'm done, I've got another 10 minutes at least. Philadelphians were commended for their effort to obey. I've just told you uh, chapter 3, verse 8 in, in the, the Philadelphian church. And encouraged to hold tightly whatever strength they have. Whatever strength that you have. Whatever the Lord has given you. Utilize it to grow his kingdom. We've all got different. Um, we've all got different anointings. We've all got different callings. We've all got different uh, uh, callings to go into the word, into the ministry. We're all different. Paul says about the body, eye, ear, nose, arm, leg, but they all function together for the body. So, so, so what he's also given you, you can read it in this context as well. That that anointing and gift he's given you. Are you using it, or are you losing it? Or you just, well, I'll just let somebody else do it. No, you can't just do that. When somebody gives you a gift, how can you throw it on the ground? Or trample on it? He's encouraging the Philadelphian church. He's encouraging us in this day and age right now in 2023, soon to be 2024. Whatever strength that you have, Hold fast. We'll read a bit further down. And then we'll, then we'll, oh my goodness, go for another hour. It says again, I'm coming quickly, right? Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Ooh. And he shall, he shall go out no more well when that jerusalem comes down and that new jerusalem that is by the way um i don't want to go out 
I want to go in there and stay in there. That's what I want to be. The rest of the guys, I want to go into the, go into the world. I don't want to be anywhere near that. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. Well, this is really profound. Now, those are those are the ones that are going to get into that city. Those are the ones that are going to finish the race. I will write, I will write on him the name of my God. We're going to get the most perfect name written on us. Jesus Christ, Son of God. I don't I don't have a tattoo on me just just as it as it is. But that tattoo, I hope it's massive. It's right across the front of my head or my chest or my back or my arms. You can write it all over me. That name. And of the city. My God, in the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. Jeez. How exciting. What, what other word have we got that encourages us in the times we're living in than this right here? A promise. Oh, but you don't believe it? Well, that's fine. Don't believe it. It really doesn't worry me. I'm going to have another hot cup of tea in a minute. I really want everybody I know to be in that new Jerusalem. Every single last one of you. But at the end of the day, it's between you and God, isn't it? I think there's nothing to do with Fergus Buckley. Nothing. Or Carl Rue. Nothing to do with him either. Him and I are just a pair of servants sowing good seed. That's all we do. And then he says... As he closes, we're not going to talk about the lukewarm church. That's another story. Talking about the positive stuff. He who has an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit says to the churches. So how many churches does he speak to here? Seven. Eh? Two are commended. Five are corrected. He who has an ear, let him hear. What are you hearing nowadays, guys? What are you hearing? Doom and gloom, sickness, death, protests. We missed them again, by the way, on, on Saturday. We saw them setting up the barricades and the special police were coming in, armed to the teeth and the all But we, the Lord just took us away in another way. We didn't see any of them. Pity in a way, actually. I would like to preach to some of them. What are you hearing? What are you reading? What are you listening to? Who are you walking with? Is it, oh, well, you know, Fergus, and hang on a second, let me just get it right here. Oh, geez, Carl, you just don't know what I've been through, brother. Oh, really? Well, I haven't got time for that. Why? What you work to do? I'm listening to what he says. There's a man there that does a lot of filming on, on the news, news uh, agencies. Massive. But what he films and what they tell us, I don't think it kind of adds up. Because I don't watch the news anymore. Because I don't know who to believe. It's just my take. Politicians. People with their faith in politicians. I met a few politicians, by the way. Now, black and white. I haven't met one I trust. Not one do I trust. Because, like many Christians, they listen to this one. They start well. They don't finish very good. 
Because as I close, I'm going to talk about now the last point I'm going to make is the finishing line. The line. Hold fast. Hold fast. The finishing. I did a lot of running. There's a guy sitting in front of me here with his hands in his head. He runs as well. I used to see him coming past my old house. But a lot of 10 years I ran. Uh, 42s, 32s, 22s. I've done a lot. I qualified for the comrades, but I didn't run it. Well, I left, went to Germany. Once I was running in Bedford View, it was a 21, I think. So it's a quick, 21's got to be quick to finish in time to get that little medal. And I was sending it, but I came out too quick. Oh, hello, I came out too quick. How many Christians do you know come and say, they're going to change the world? They're on fire. They're going to do this and they're going to do it. Hang on a second. Five years later, where are they? I will find them anymore. Looked at my watch. It's coming around the corner and I had a, a kilometer and a half to go. I burnt out. I'd, I'd come out too quick, James. You know that. You've run a few, haven't you? Well, I'm not going to make it. And on the other side of bed with you, it was a clan gathering. This one's for you, Aileen. And I was finished. And the pipe band started up playing Scotland the Brave. Jeez, just lifted me up, went off I went. Got him by about three minutes and I got my little medal. That means nothing, what's a medal? But I finished, you see. So I finished, I got across the line. Sadly, Sadly, so many Christians don't get across the line. They don't get there because they give up. They give up. I believe, only my belief, the line is there. We can see the line. It's, you know, you know, you know we've come into the stadium now. We've got to go around Graham once, and there's the guy with the gun, you know. But we just don't get there. And the world's looking at us. You make no error. The world is looking at us. As Christians, as believers, as followers of the way. We talk worse than the unbeliever. With doubt. Heads in the sand. Oh, woe is me. It's so hard. Well, you know, what about the, the Christians in Iraq? What about the Christians in Iran? What about the Christians actually in the Gaza Strip? Everybody's talking about the Muslim and Hamas and all the rest of them. Everybody's talking about the Jew. That's fine. That's fine. But we've got Christian brothers, I know for a fact, in Gaza. Who prays for them? They believe us. India. I've got a call to India. The province that this guy wants me to come to, I mean, we're talking about India. So that province happens to have, uh, I don't know, 855,000 million people. I've been facetious. 3% are Christians. 3%. Got to finish the line. When we get across the line, who are we bringing with? Once again, a little race story. I want to close and pray. My first ever run was the Spring Striders 32. And I happened to be training with quite a few men that knew what they were doing. Uh, one of them had about 10 golds, 15 silvers, and the comrades, that's 94 kilometers long, by the way. And the others were all comrade runners, and here's all bucking, coming up the back end. They were ahead of me. And the guy was there with the clock, and I knew I wasn't going to get across. And they all just hung back. Colin Hurst. And they said, come, Bucky. And you know what they did? These guys could have just sent it, man. They all got into a straight line like this. We linked arms and they ran me across the line. That's why the comrades, James is called the comrades. They're comrades, man. They help one another. As Christians. Oh, I don't know. If I was a, a young guy trying to believe in Christ and I see how some Christians carry on, I wouldn't want to be a Christian either. I'll be honest with you, Mahatma Gandhi said, you know what, I could learn to love your Jesus, but you Christians, I can't stand you. Think about what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. How do you act? 
Oh, you're holier than, than thou in church in front of Pastor Buck. And oh, that's flipping great. Yeah. What happens when you walk out the door? Are you still the same? Are you still spirit filled? Well, you're not going to get across the line if you, unless you are. Jesus Christ says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. You've got to be the same. We've got to be positive. We've got to finish the line. Hold fast to what he's given you. Think of General Sherman. He said, I'm coming, man. Just hang in there. Hang in. Well, there's somebody, hang on a lot more famous and a lot more that I put my trust in. His name is Jesus Christ. And if he says, hang on, I'm coming, it's coming. And we're in a win-win situation. Because if you die before he comes, you're going to be with him anyway, aren't you? You'll just be behind him when you, yeah, that's come, doesn't he? I'll be saying, there he is. That, that, that guy that's got my beautiful leather jacket. I shouldn't have given it to him, actually. Catch him. He's one of us. Amen. Hold fast to what I've given you. For I'm coming soon. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you, Father, that, that the saints come out on a, a cold, wintry, wet London day. They've come down the road. They've come to have a fellowship, like the covenanters, Lord. Thank you for everyone on the screen. Some are very late at night, but they've come on the screen. Some have bat battles with load shedding, Lord, and they've got inverters, and they use their time to come on the screen. That we could encourage one another, Lord. That we could link arms, Lord Jesus, and bring people into the fold and run across the line together, Lord Jesus. I pray for that day, Lord, that when you come, the cry in the sky, and we'll be ready waiting for you. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray blessings, favor, and protection over this body of believers in your holy righteous name. Amen. Amen. Amen.